And we are live here for the NCAA South Regional. Match number two at the University of Tampa. I'm Taylor Storthy. Alabama Huntsville, Mississippi College. The winner takes on the Spartans. The loser takes on the Golden Tigers. It's a start of a thrilling weekend here. And we've got a rematch from the Gulf South Conference Tournament where Alabama Huntsville eliminated Mississippi College to end Mississippi College's regular season. The Chargers would go on to win the conference tournament, defeating West Alabama and the finals on May 6th. And Mississippi College is hungry for revenge. We'll be back in just a minute as we're just about to get set for the first inning. Mississippi College is visiting and will bat first. Alabama Huntsville will be the home team batting second.
We're about set to go here for regional softball at the University of Tampa. There may be a couple last minute changes. They might want to redo a few of the lines on the dirt, mainly for the pitching circle. And yeah, it looks like they will be doing that. But I'll utilize this opportunity to introduce each of the team's lineups before we get underway. The Alabama Huntsville Chargers will be leading off with Lauren Hayes, the sophomore from Decatur, Alabama. Batting second is Kinley Adams, the outfielder from Newmarket, Alabama. Kaylee Vaught is batting third. She's out in left field and from Pisgah, Alabama. Jada Henderson from Hartsell, Alabama is batting fourth as the designated player. Maddie Cartron is batting fifth as the first base player. Lily Young, number one, is at short, batting in sixth. Jessica Eddy batting seventh. She forms the battery alongside starting pitcher Josie Thompson. Gracie Green bats eighth and plays third base today. That'll be where the junior from Huntsville will be. And the ninth hitter is Sadie Thompson. The utility player from Bolton, Alabama, will be in center field today. And as previously mentioned, Josie Thompson takes the circle. Meanwhile, for the Choctaws of Mississippi College, they'll be lining up with Shelby Samples leading off. The outfield freshman from Benton, Arkansas, will be followed by Brooke Fagan from Mississippi. The graduate student will be playing second base. Batting third is number 20, McCall Lee, the junior from Brandon, Mississippi. Batting fourth is the th first base player, Jenna Ergel, number 33. Batting fifth is Jordan Moore, the third base player. Batting sixth is Jordan LaFosse, the shortstop. Batting seventh at the designated player position is Cameron Eaton. Batting eighth in left field is number two, J.C. Dill. The so she's a senior from Gardendale, Alabama. And number ninth is Alexis Laughlin from Hurley, Mississippi. And taking the circle is number 22, Cameron Bailey. So we'll be excited as these two Gulf South Conference rivals get set for the game. The Chargers will be wearing gray and a darker blue. Meanwhile, the Sippy College wears dark blue and a light blue for their jerseys today. Almost a little clash and also some darker outfits in the heat. In game one, I mentioned Tuskegee wearing black uniforms in this heat. We'll see how much it's cooled down as the day has continued. So the real feel has dropped to a measly 105, showcasing that, yes, it is still quite hot. But for now, things should be clear for the game. As mentioned, the winner will go on to face the Tampa Spartans in round two tomorrow at noon. The loser will go on to face Tuskegee in the loser's bracket. Of course, two eliminations, double elimination style format. So they will be A-OK -okay. if they lose today. They're just gonna have to win a few more games than they'd hoped. As player introductions continue, we'll be right back.
And welcome back. Alabama Huntsville, Mississippi College, two Gulf South Conference rivals take the field for game two of the South Regional here in Division II Softball 2023 tournament. If you missed game one, I can give you a rundown of what happened. The Tampa Spartans took on the Tuskegee Golden Tigers, and Tampa had the upper hand. They scored early and were able to get a little bit extra offense going before securing an 8-0 victory after five innings. Hampton struggled from the circle, wasn't able to get a strikeout. The offense also wasn't super good for Tuskegee, although Chadwick did break up the no-hitter. In terms of the Spartans' offense, there was some overall success. Weininger soared two hits and two RBIs. Avery Perkins had two hits and an RBI. And Mary Beth Fellman went five innings with six strikeouts, only conceding the one base runner. Huntsville ready to go. From the circle, it is Thompson. The lefty opens up against Samples, another lefty. Live stats will mark Samples as a righty, but indeed you can see from the stream that uh, this is not the case. Strike one taken. And samples ready to go. Is going to send this one to center field, but making the catch in center field is Thompson, who's there in time. That is going to bring up Fagan, the second batter in the order. Brooke Fagan, 13 home runs, 48 RBIs. The one thing Mississippi College has been known for this season has been a red-hot offense. But the home run heavy side, who's recorded 82 home runs in 52 games, may find some troubles here at the Valley Ballpark of the Moley Family Stadium. It is very much a park that likes to keep the long ball in play. That could play to their weaknesses. Hard hit balls, however, do have a shot of getting down in the outfield. And if they can get over the outfielders, you're looking at extra bases. The count's going to quickly turn to one and one for Fagan. Thompson continuing from the circle. Thompson looking at her wrist, getting the pitch she wants. Just misses outside for ball two. I'll give you a quick rundown on Thompson. She's had 11 starts, one complete game, and also one save. 59 innings, 45 strikeouts, just six walks. So she is known for her command. But so far, hasn't been able to find the zone in this at bat. And actually, no, it is two and two, so I think a call earlier had been missed. It might have been 2-1. It is 2-2. Popped up. But making the catch is Carton. Carton for the second out of the inning. Certainly not the start you want for Mississippi College. You'd like to get the offense going. But now you do have a chance with McCauley, who has been the team's strongest hitter. A 420 average, a 776 average slugging percentage and 469 on base percentage. A little surprised to see the on base that low with 16 walks to 12 strikeouts. As you typically expect a higher OBP when you do have a positive walk to strikeout ratio. The team as a whole average is better with the walk to strikeout ratios too. Here's the 1-0. Fouled away, and so Lee will find herself in a 1-1 count now. Taking a look at both teams, the Choctaws with a 372 batting average, Alabama Huntsville 335. There's a 364 team ERA for the Choctaws, and for the Chargers, it's 291. So the thing to know, the Chargers will be a little bit better from the circle. The Choctaws a little bit better behind the plate. 
But that home run differential is certainly what I'm interested in and just how much of an effect the stadium dimensions would be playing in that. Foul back, the count goes 2-2. Two and two. There's quite a few pitchers that have been active this season for Huntsville. Thompson actually has the third most starts. So interesting to see her getting the start here. But clearly a lot of confidence from her coach is, oof, this one just outside. The count goes full. And by the way, home plate umpire is Anthony Amato. First base is Eric Salgado and third base Richard Cintron. A few changes in the orders for each umpire here. And the full count pitch is blooped to center field. Actually, that's going to be a harder line drive. Hard to tell from the sound of the bat. And it is a two-out double for Lee. It got down in front and got behind Thompson, allowing Lee to have plenty of time to round first and head to second. That's actually the type of play you might be worried to see if there's a third base on that play. Good job keeping alive in the at-bat and now bring a runner to scoring position for Ertl. Ertl has 53 RBIs at second for the Choctaws on the season. He's also recorded 114 total bases. That is third for the Choctaws. But yeah, pretty impressive 376 average alongside of that. All the qualified hitters for the Choctaws hitting over 300. Although a chunk of the team, three batters, are below the average mark. Here's the 1-0. Fouled away. Ergel, the senior, is one for three on stolen base attempts. But as a team, Mississippi College is 82 for 93. So not too bad on the base paths. They're slightly better percentage-wise compared to Alabama Huntsville, who are 95 to 113, but both teams with mixed success. The count goes one and two. Thompson has a chance to get out of the inning. With a runner in scoring position, would look to do so right here. Gets her sign. This one, bloop to center field, it'll drop, and this could score a run. But no, they're actually going to hold Lee at third, as Thompson was quickly on top of it. They didn't want to risk the play at the plate. Runners at the corners now with two outs, and Ertl delivers here to bring up Moore. Jordan Moore was five points away from a 400 regular season average. Records a 480 on base percentage and a 605 slugging percentage. There are only two hitters on the Choctaws that are under five, or sorry, under 600 in their slugging percentages, which should tell you just how strong they are when it comes to getting doubles and extra base hits. Moore has a total of six home runs, which is actually a lower amount compared to a chunk of the qualified hitters. But Moore has a chance to get another RBI here. The runner, very close to home. First pitch, ball one just missing up high. The 1 0's grounded over to second. It takes a weird hop, and Hayes can't recover to make the play. It bounced off Hayes. And there was not going to be a lot of time to get the throw to first. And in desperation, tried to use and pick it up with her glove to flip it over to first. But when the flip was made, the ball wasn't in the glove. A run scores, and Mississippi College will take the early lead. We'll have to see how that's graded, and it is going to be an error. Could be a costly one long term. But for now, the Choctaws will take this early lead. Here is LaFosse taking strike one. It's an honor and run coming home for Lee. And now two aboard, still with two away. 
Thompson again checking the wristband. It's It's got the strategies for how they want to deal with the Choctaw hitters. As this one is fouled, it would have potentially gotten down and been a dangerous ball that could have scored Urgle. Even little bloopers with two outs can be dangerous. As the runners are running, there's no reason to wait for it to drop. You don't have to tag up for a double play opportunity. Especially with a runner on first, you got every base being a force out here. Except home since, well, you can't have that just yet. Here's the 1-1. Good frame attempt, but wasn't going to work. I like the thinking from Eddie there to try to help Thompson stay in the count as it's going to go down to two and one. The Foss fouls this one back. It's two and two. This will be Thompson's 24th pitch coming up. Certainly been a longer first inning than she was hoping for after getting the first two outs with a double, single, and error. Bring home that first run for the Choctaws. Here comes the two -two. Fouled away. We'll Staying alive. The 2-2, two -two, strike three, and she will go down looking. LaFosse cannot convert to help Mississippi College, but the Choctaws were already able to get the offense moving. They scored one run off the air, off two hits, and Alabama Huntsville, they're going to have to charge and catch back up in the bottom half of the first and further on. You're watching NCAA South Regional Softball, and we will be right back. Pledge I've pledged. United as one. Mississippi College struck first back in the bottom of the first inning. And now they have to hold on to this lead. Well, to their benefit, they've gotten an ace in the circle. Cameron Bailey, the team leader with a 2.63 ERA, 102 strikeouts, just 43 walks in 165 innings. She has a 23 and 6 record with 27 starts and 38 appearances. So alongside that, there was 11 times she appeared from the bullpen as this pitch misses for ball one. Hayes leads off for Alabama Huntsville. For the season, Hayes hitting 418, just under 600 in slugging percentage, but leads the team for Alabama Huntsville. Again, that'll tell you a big difference in the offenses between Mississippi College and Alabama Huntsville. The slugging percentages are a lot different. We could argue this also leads to Alabama Huntsville. Being more used to playing a small ball style that Tampa's field somewhat favors. And already, Bailey falls behind 3-0 to Hayes, not able to get that outside corner. Hayes is certainly going to be taking this next pitch. And I know she'd certainly like to take a free base here to start the game. Bailey checks her wristband on the left arm. And that's ball four. Hayes gets the lead off, and that'll allow Adams to step up to the plate. Kinley Adams, the strongest hitter in terms of average. Although she is definitely more of an on-base type of player and contact hitter than a power hitter like a lot of the other teams. Only 480 slugging, still pretty good total. 541 on-base percentage is what I want to highlight, though. 541 with 35 walks, team leading, and nine strikeouts. 
One of the best for the amount of at-bats she has had. She's also recorded a few sacrifice flies and hits as well. And I have a feeling she'll be looking to drop a bunt here in the 0-1 cow. Get Hayes on first. She'd be the tying run. Bailey checks the wrist. Fires. And this one's strike two. Got to credit Bailey for challenging, even though Adams has been looking for bunts. Some hard fastballs that Adams had just not been ready for. Count goes to 0-2 for Adams. Adams fouls this one away, and it's going to go into the netting. There is netting behind home plate that prevents foul balls from going back to the fans. I think there is one little window that sometimes a foul ball can go over a dugout. That's usually how they go out for foul balls, but more often than not, they are kept within the field of play. The 0-2 is blooped down to left field. A sliding catch by Dill. One away. Good job by Dill to range forward and make a little sliding grab. Certainly was going down in no man's land and would have brought Hayes to second. But good job to get forward. I think the outfield is playing shallow knowing that Adams wasn't a huge power threat. That's the reason she was in position. LaFosse and Moore were too far behind to make that play. And that'll bring up Vaught with one out. Swing and a miss for strike one. Vaught hitting 355 this season. Second of the team in slugging with 568. Leads the team with, or second of the team with six home runs. Lead the teams with 46 RBIs. And falls back 0-2 as this one's fouled away. Bailey will be, is liking that she's getting ahead in this count here. A strikeout wouldn't be a bad thing as well. Getting two outs makes the job a little easier. Of course, you also have the double play opportunity if you can get some weak contact. This one's going to be fouled away. Ergo can't make the play. Gave it a good effort, though. It was also too far for Samples or Fagan to do anything with. And we'll go again with the 0-2. Bailey, the 0-2 again, this time misses for ball one. Savant staying alive in the count. It's always a tough take when you're down and you're seeing a pitch that's going high and looking somewhat fast. The 1-2 one, two. One, two line gets down for a base hit. Hayes will stay at second. Lex not to head to third. Samples was pretty close to that ball, so would have been a tricky play at third, but Alabama Huntsville elect not to risk it. They like this opportunity as the go-ahead run gets the first. For Henderson. Henderson, the freshman hitting 387, has 36 RBIs and 14 and not walks to nine strikeouts. So better in that category too. Takes ball one. I mentioned these two teams had faced off against each other in the Gold South Conference tournament. It was a two to thirteen loss for the Shock Taws. And a pretty disappointing defeat. It was the last game Mississippi College played. While the Chargers were able to play one more game, winning the conference tournament. That's one difference between Gulf South play and Sunshine State Conference play as this game is being broadcasted on the standard Sunshine State Conference TV channel that we use for other Spartans games. The Gold South Conference uses a conference tournament to develop, a ch determine a champion. And now, staying alive in this fight is Henderson. Now in a 1-2 count, the scoreboard says, okay, now it says 1-2. It was 0-2 for a second on the scoreboard. But here with one away, two aboard, Bailey gets the pitch. 
Henderson stays alive, and we'll go again. Again, a beautiful afternoon here at the University of Tampa's campus. Cloudy day, clouds in the sky. See the construction going on behind? A few of the workers, whenever they take a break, can look down and see some regional softball being played. Henderson staying alive in the at-bat. And, of course, as time goes on, Bailey will continue to get frustrated thinking about what she needs to do to get the out right here. That's exactly what you need to do if you're Henderson. Also try to get Bailey's pitch count higher. See if eventually you can try to make fatigue a factor. Obviously, for softball, these pitchers are better at going the distance. As this one's going to be grounded hard to short, and there's not enough time to make the play. Runner is caught in a pickle. And the ball gets away. And honestly, I was watching that, and there was a lot of chaos on the base paths. What I'll tell you is that the actions, there's still going to be, actually, hold on. Let's take a look really quickly. What's going to be the ruling as the bases are loaded? So on the grounder, the Foss fielded it and was ready to try to make a double play, but couldn't get the force out at second in time. Vaught slid in safely. She links back at third and sees that Hayes is taking a bit larger lead. So with the heads up play, she fires it over to third. Hayes is barely safe, but all of a sudden is caught in a pickle. And Vaught from first heads over to third thinking that that's going to be an out. And when the ball gets away, meaning the pickle won't get the out, she has to go back to second alongside Henderson, going back to first. So, yeah, certainly interesting. But ultimately, they're all good. They're all safe. Base is loaded. And Cartrin swings and misses for strike one. So, yeah, a little bit of a chaotic play on the base paths. Cartrin, by the way, batting 283 with a 510 slugging percentage. Has 40 RBIs in the season with seven home runs. Leads the team in both RBIs and home runs. They're going to run the squeeze play here, and the game is tied. A well-executed sacrifice bunt with a runner on third. Hayes makes it home. Vaught gets to third. Henderson gets to second. Hartron can't make it to first. Two outs. Go ahead run on third. And that'll bring up Young. The Chargers needed to respond, and they did just that. A smart play there from the Chargers going with the sacrifice squeeze. It was a well-placed bunt, too. But it was fielded quickly enough by Bailey that the out at first was always going to be made. The out at home, meanwhile, was always going to be safe. 0-1. Misses up high for ball one. Before the at-bat, the Choctaws had a quick conference in the circle. I think ready to refocus the team to try to get out of the jam. They have a chance to escape the jam with just the one run coming home. But obviously they were probably hoping to hold on to that lead as the count goes one and two. The previous inning ended with runners aboard and a strikeout looking. Will we see a repeat here? Bailey checks the wrist. Misses low for ball two. Was hoping the heat would generate a swing, but Young holds up. The 2-2. Grounded hard to third. The throw to first on time and on target. One run comes home on a squeeze bunt, but that is all. The Chargers are able to equalize as we've completed one here. Both teams have one run and two hits. The difference, Alabama Huntsville is one error, but they were able to make this comeback in the bottom of the first. 
And we'll be right back with more South Region softball right after this. And we're just about ready to go. Mississippi College look to reclaim the lead that was lost in the bottom of the first. The Chargers saw the Choctaws score run and responded. And now the Choctaws will open up the top of the second inning. Eaton, Dill, and Laughlin, the one players are, that are due up. This one driven a right field, but caught as it's pretty shallow. One away. In terms of Mississippi College, Eden actually was leading the slugging percentage with 900. Absolutely wild number for a qualified hitter. Anyway, Dill will step up now with one away. The senior will look to get the offense moving. It will be an, a game of strong offenses. Both teams hitting over 300. And there were 15 runs scored in the last time these two teams faced. Already mentioned that a majority did come from one of the sides, so the game was somewhat uncompetitive, but here we go with, I believe, was a 1-0, no, 0-1 count. The count is going to go 0-2 very quickly here. A good strike pitch there from Thompson. As I know, she will definitely like to have a quicker inning this time. Misses up high for ball one. Taking a look at Dill's stats this season, the weakest qualified hitter with just a 301 average, and by just, 301 is still very good, and it means you're getting on base quite often, and She's also done that pretty well, too. 405 on base percentage. The big stat is the 570 slugging percentage and 20 RBIs. Also has knocked over five home runs, but certainly will be hard to get her sixth of the season today. The count's two and two. And this one's lined up the middle for a base hit. Dill will get aboard with one away. Third hit of the ball game for the Choctaws to bring up Laughlin with one away. I'll be interested to see. It looks like Laughlin is a lefty, and this is where we really going to talk about the platoon. Thompson, the lefty facing a lefty, she has a big advantage in this at bat. There's a larger advantage for lefty pitchers against lefty hitters. Oh, and one of the gloves, I think, at a, one of the pads, or one of the things that have been used by Dill as a hitter was still on the surface of play, so they just had to quickly take it off. Enfield playing in, anticipating a bunt as this fastball is up high and in the zone for strike one. Yeah, usually you know when a batter is taking off the leg guard when they're on base. Sometimes you might forget to take that off the field. That's what happened right there. Here's the 0-1. Thompson gets the sign. The bunt is fouled back. And Eddie, just not there in time. It was definitely going to be tough for her to react quickly and run to it. Also, it's way too far for Green to make the run from third. 
two strikes, though, you eliminate a bunt threat more often than not because you don't want to bunt it foul because that's a free out. Thompson, the 0-2. Taken outside. Good eye there from Laughlin. We'll see if Dill wants to be active on the base paths. They do have a player actively watching first. The 1-2. Taken high for ball two. Now, I normally say when I'm doing baseball games is that a lefty pitcher has an easier way to look over at first base, but you're usually not starting from a side position when winding up for softball, so that advantage actually is pretty negligible. Anyway, here's the 2 2. As this one's fouled away, Laughlin keeping alive. It's already been a five pitch at bat, and certainly you do want to keep. Putting the pressure right here. The 2-2. Two -two. Fouled away. Mentioned that Tampa, for a first time in program history, reached 40 wins in a season. Well, Mississippi College and Alabama Huntsville did the same. They got a slight benefit of a few more matches, but Mississippi College enters this game with a 42-10 and 10 record. Alabama Huntsville, 44 and 9. The duo are also two of the better teams in the Gulf South Conference. I mentioned they met in the semifinal of that tournament. 24 and 6, Mississippi College, 25 and 4, Alabama Huntsville. And the count is full. Runner on first, Dill is probably going. There's no reason not to. Fouled away. A good crowd has showed up for the games today and obviously expect to see some great showings over the weekend for both Tampa and any other Gulf South team visiting and as well Tuskegee. This one's going to be blooped down to left field and caught enough time for Vaught to make the play in shallow left field. At least it wasn't a double play, I think you could argue if you're Laughlin. That'll bring up Samples again with two outs and a runner aboard. Samples has five triples this season, and with the large outfield, you definitely could do so with a line drive into the gaps. That's the type of speed that would also bring the run from first home, who will be running on anything this time, as this one's going to be brought to the outfield. It is caught. A good run there by Vaught to make the play, and the inning is over. Alabama Huntsville gets a hit, but can't do much more than that. We've played one and a half as we enter the bottom of the second. The Chargers will look to take the lead, and we'll be back with more South Region softball on, Spart on Tampa Spartans TV. And we are back. The Chargers con were conceded a hit, but were able to shut the Choctaw's offensive surge down. And they will be hoping that they can do the opposite, get the offense and score a few runs. You know, all the Choctaws are hoping to keep the game level. Bailey was able to get out of a jam in the first inning and opens up against Eddie here. 7, 8, and 9 is due up for Alabama Huntsville.
swing and a miss. The off-speed fooling Eddie this time. That's a good pitch to locate down and in the dirt and generates a big swing and miss. Bailey takes a look at the sign from her arm. And up high. And I'll say you're definitely, when you have that wristband, you're able to look and see what pitches are the best to use in order, what certain batters are weak against, whether you want to go inside, outside, high, off speed, all the things like that. And let's see what she's going to do here with the one-two. This one's grounded over to short. Good job by LaFosse to read the grounder. One away. It's always weird to judge the bounces here in the third field. They're very inconsistent. And LaFosse was ready for the high bounce at first. But then the second bounce actually stayed somewhat low. That's a dangerous ball because if your glove is still too high, that can get past you. Just ask Bill Buckner how that feels. In fact, we had a few similar plays during last year's regional tournament. I believe afflicted the Rollins Tars. One away is this pitch is going to go high for ball one. This one's going to be ground up the middle, and it's a third hit of the ball game for the Chargers. And the previous inning for the Choctaw started with a hit, or with an out, then a hit, and then two straight outs. Bailey's saying, oh, hey, let's just keep that script going and let me get out of this jam. However, I think Thompson, who's going to step up now, will not be a super big fan of that. Thompson, 292 average so far this season. A 373 on base percentage, just a little higher than her slugging percentage. I have a feeling she might be looking for a bunt to move the runner up and try to get on base. Corner's already playing in. Takes for strike one. Lee was ready to go if Green wanted to try to steal second. You always have to be ready for any base stealing threat here. You definitely would like that runner on second. Not only get rid of the double play ball, but you also put him, put her in position to score on a base hit. Gets in the dirt, but Lee on top of it. Great block. And here's the thing. It gets down in the dirt, but Lee is right there. And within maybe a third of a second, she's already in position. Try to make a quick throw to second in case the runner decided to jump. Count goes one and one. The riser bounces off her glove and the runner will advance. For sort of an off-speed rising ball there that just slips out of the glove. That's the opposite of what you want if you're Bailey. Because that double play ball is no longer possible. We're going to see that Urgel is still playing pretty shallow, anticipating a potential bunt. Third base player now is a little further back. This is just going to be a slap grounder. The throw... In time, good job to get it out of the dirt by Ertl. And Bailey was able to make that play well enough that Green was not going to risk getting the third. Two away now. And the Chargers will bring up their leadoff hitter once again in Hayes. Hayes had gotten caught in a pickle but escaped it. And of course, later scored as the game tying run. Corners playing in. They're anticipating a slow grounder or maybe even a bunt here with two away. Alabama Huntsville have already shown that they are not scared of bunting in situations like these. With one out and the bases loaded, they dropped a squeeze bunt, which worked. So the Choctaw's not making any, any sort of precautions. They're not taking any chances. But what this also does, if you take a look in the middle of the field, opens up a very big gap if the ball can be hit past Bailey, as this one's going to go down the line and foul. She quickly goes 0-2 for Hayes. So 0-2 from the first at bat where Hayes drew a walk is a little surprising. Shows that Bailey has really started to warm up, finding the zone and generating more swings, whether they be misses or swings and weak contact is the big question. 
up high, and that'll miss for ball one. We hear some excitement, which I believe is from the Mississippi College dugout. Could be from Alabama's as well. This one's lined down the line and foul. Dill not able to get to it. That is a very scary play if that had stayed fair and got to the corner. Because that not only ties the game, Dill's or Hayes is probably trying for three. One two for Hayes. Bailey gets a sign she wants after looking at the dugout. And this one misses low. Wasn't a bad off speed pitch. Especially when it breaks down, you also have to remember, when does it cross over the zone? Did, would it have crossed over when it was still moving? But no, it didn't. 2-2 two -two here for Hayes. Grounded up the middle, and a good grab, nearly falling out of her glove. And Bailey recovers quickly to get A's out at first by a step. Bailey gets a few hugs from her teammates. A very good play there. She was able to make the fielding play on both the final outs. Chargers get a base runner and nothing more. We'll be back with more softball on Tampa Spartans TV right after this. So both teams have decided to kind of repeat what the other did to start the first and second innings. The Choctaws open with a run. The Chargers open with a run. The second inning was even more uh, clear that the teams were repeating what they were doing. Out, hit, out, out. Out, hit, out, out. Both teams are one run on three hits, although Huntsville does have one error. And that is the difference in the pitching line. This one's lined to left field and catch on the run by Vaught. Vaught has been very active today in left field and gets the first out of the inning. Good run there to judge the line drive. That definitely was dangerous, was definitely hitting the gap, but gets to it just in time. And that'll bring up Lee with one away. Strike one taken. Lee had the first hit of the game for the Charger or for the Choctaws. It was a double. And scored the only run for Mississippi College. Misses inside for ball one. Now, righty hitters will always do a little bit better against lefties, but when you're facing off against a lefty, you do have to prepare a little differently, and a lot of pitchers you see in D2 softball are right-handed pitchers, so the novelty makes it a little harder to read even when you theoretically have the advantage. It's a true disadvantage for left-handed hitters to have to deal with the novelty and the awkward release point from the left-hand side. Grounded and caught over at third. Good play by Green to make the grab, and a good job by Carden to make the stretch and grab it for out number two. The 
Ergel back up now. Singled back in the first inning. Takes ball one inside. Here's the 1-0. That one's taken. Oof, that was close. I think judged a little bit low. But it certainly looked like it was close to the zone. But hey, that's why I'm a commentator. I'm not an umpire. I can't see that perfectly. And I've got a few skewed a little to the left here in the booth. Anyway, let's see the 2-0 now to Urgle. Urgle grounds this one over to third. Green with the grab. It's 1-2-3, the first time we've seen a 1-2-3 inning today for the Chargers. And the Chargers bats will come back up to the plate, do up are the two 3-4 and four hitters. We'll be back with more South Regional Baseball. You're watching Tampa Spartans TV. It's the NCAA Tournament. NCAA Division II. campuses, in our communities. The clouds certainly brought a little bit of relief from the heat today, but the sun is shining to begin the bottom of the third. Through two and a half, it's still 1-1. And recently, the Chargers had a perfect inning from the circle, getting three straight outs. But now the question will be whether they can make the Choctaws pay for the lack of offense here. Adams leads off, followed by Vaught and Henderson. Here's Bailey ready to go from the circle. Squared up for a bunt, but that one's going to be strike one on high and outside corner. Grounded at the middle for a base hit. Went swinging on the 0 1 and connected. So Adams gets aboard to start the inning. Hard grounder that was just too hard uh, for LaFosse to seriously get to. That's going to bring up Vaught now with a runner aboard. I have a feeling Huntsville are going to try to bunt and advance the runner. Anticipate Moore and Ergel playing pretty shallow in a bunt defense. We also got Henderson on deck who'd probably be in a position if the runner is able to get through to score it. Taken low for ball one. So while Vaught squared up for a bunt at first, ultimately didn't commit with it. I wonder if that's going to be another little mind game, try to make her think bunt, but go for a swing. That's what she does do, as this one's flown to center field. Runner is going to tag up from first, but thinks better of it as the throw in is pretty quick. Laughlin got to that fly ball, wasn't really in danger of getting behind. One away. That'll bring up Henderson. Henderson's also one for one today. Henderson's single helped manufacture the run that the Chargers needed to equalize the game. Bailey checks first. Wonder if they are going to send Adams here. Up high, ball one. Lee was quickly back on her feet. She has got to be ready. As well, so does Fagan and LaFosse ready to get to second to cover for any steal attempt. 
One and oh. This one fouled away. The count goes one and one. I believe a few Spartan softball players may be in attendance, but I know at least the coaches are. They get a free opportunity to scout one of their next opponents. And here's the 1-1 one -one as Bailey checks back over at her dugout. It looks like she gets a sign. And ultimately responds it with what's on her bound is, oof, that one's going to go foul. Very dangerous hit. Goes right down the line, but just misses by, I think, maybe a foot or so. One and two now for Henderson. Got a nice Thursday afternoon as we kick off tournament play here at the University of Tampa. 3.53 p.m. Driven down the left field line and foul. Dill was chasing and it would have been an even more frantic chase if it stayed fair. But just goes foul. And we'll go back to a one and two count. There has only been one strikeout today, and that came against the Choctaws. Bailey is in a position to try to get her first strikeout of the game from the circle. The Chargers would prefer a strikeout to a double play, but obviously would rather get a hit, get something more, or even take the lead. This one's going to go low for 2-2. Two and two. This one taken for Woof. It almost looked like they were about to call a strike three for Amato, and I have to agree with the other commentator who's currently doing the radio broadcast for Mississippi College. That looked like strike three. The count is going to go full. It's three and two. Bailey checking the wrist, and here it goes. Foul back. And Adams was running, so I anticipate she's going to be doing that again. 3-2, you might as well try a steal. The worst case scenario is you pop her line into a little double play, but the benefits could be huge if there's a big hit. Here's the 3-2. Swung on and missed. Runner goes to second, and they double it up. Bailey gets her first strikeout, and Adams is out on the base paths. The Choctaws get a quick double play on a strikeout, and a runner caught stealing. It's a 1-2-3 inning in what I like to call an unorthodox way. We've played three, and we're still tied at one. It's been back and forth. Neither team has really gotten ahead. We'll be back with more regional softball here on the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network, Tampa Spartans TV. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I am an NCAA student athlete. And I pledge to be a champion of unity on my team, on my campus, and in my community. I pledge to embrace differences and strive for inclusion and collaboration. I pledge to stand against racism, hate, and discrimination. I pledge to strive for love, care, and forgiveness. I pledge to stand against silence, deceit, and obscurity. I pledge to strive for dialogue, truth, and understanding. I pledge to stand against fear and doubt. I pledge to strive for trust and belief in one another. I pledge to stand against complacency and stagnancy. I pledge to strive for change and growth. I commit to supporting my fellow student athletes in all circumstances that impact them. I commit to both choosing unity personally and encouraging it for all. I pledge these things because we are stronger together. United, United as, as one. one. Life is a highway, and at this current race, these two teams will be playing all night long. We're tied entering the top of the first, to the top of the fourth. We're tied at 1-1. Got confused seeing the 1-1 scoreline there for a second. Thompson will open with the first pitch of the inning, fouled away by Moore. Moore got on base with an error back in the first inning.
Moore, LaFosse, and Eaton. It will be the three do up. This one's going to be grounded over to short. Takes an extra second to get it securely in the glove, but Young is able to make the play for out number one. Hartron also had to nearly drop into a split again to make the, make the play, but does so. That'll bring up LaFosse again. She went down looking back in the first inning with runners in a dangerous spot. As one of two strikeouts in the game today. The most recent one, well, you just saw it. It ended the previous inning on a 1-2 double play. Foul back, and the Foss will go down 0-1 quickly. The 0-1, Thompson checks the wrist. They drop a bunt, and this one actually is... Foul ball is it actually bounced off of Tom off of uh, LaFosse there. See, it was staying in play at first, but it deflected off her, so they're gonna call it back. That'll actually be, I think, pretty good news there for Miss for Alabama Huntsville. That would have been a tough play to make. Anyway, here's the O2. And LaFosse is gonna take up high. Tournament play is where you see the best from each team. Seasons on the line, although not here. Of course, double elimination. Whoever loses does have a chance to fight for a way back through the losers portion of the bracket. They win at 3 p.m. tomorrow. They move on to a next matchup against the team that had lost in the winner's bracket. If you win today, all you have to do is play at noon and a win gets you to the regional final. Thompson checks the wrist. The one two. Swung on and missed. And that is her second strikeout of the game. Two away here in the top of the fourth. That'll bring up Eaton again. And actually, I'll quickly go over her stat line a little more fully this time. Eaton hitting 394 with 51 RBIs, 906 slugging. She leads the team with 17 home runs, but that will be maybe one little weakness as the Tampa Spartans have very much an anti-home run ballpark. I can check the numbers, and I believe her home run total is probably close to the Spartans' year total for home runs, or at the very least combined with one of her teammates. That number would surpass the Spartans. See, so yeah, Mississippi College, 85 regular season home runs. Pretty wild stuff, and at that point you have to really attribute it to, I think, some home run friendly ballparks. It's always just interesting when you take a look at the batting stats. One thing I really like is stats like OPS plus, WRC plus, because that really gives you an idea when you adjust for park dimensions and things like that. Sadly, we don't have any of those stats here. But either way, we're going to go to the 0-2. Taking up high for ball two. Ball one, actually. It was the 0-2 count. He had flown out to right field back in the second inning. Misses outside for ball two. And Thompson ready here from the circle. Swung on and missed. It's two quick strikeouts to get out of the inning. And Thompson heating up as the game continues. Run near the bottom of the fourth. The Chargers will have a chance to take the lead. Do up is the five, six, and seven hitters.
It is a warm day here at the University of Tampa. We're mentioning the real feel had the feels like temperature quite, quite high. And, and that has gone downtown to 102, and it's, it's 90 degrees here around Hyde Park. Strike one taken to start the inning by Carton. Cartron, Young, and Eddie, the three do up for the Chargers. Bailey, still in the circle. Was able to get out of a jam with a strikeout and quick double play, but needs to have another clean inning here as the Choctaw have not given any extra run of support for her. It's quickly become a pitcher's duel from the circle with two strong pitchers from both teams showing up. It's really funny because the winning team here goes straight from the frying pan and into the fire facing off against one of the best teams in the nation in the Tampa Spartans. This one's grounded up the middle. And while it's fielded, there's not enough time for Fagan to make the throw. There's a very good bounce there from Cartron to bring up Young and no one out. And I think here, I wonder if Huntsville are going to try small ball again. They're also going to know that the Choctaw are going to be very aggressive on their bunt defense. Gives the opportunity for another maybe high bouncer, a little blooper, to get down and move the runners. What you just want to do is score one run here. Set yourself up in a good position as you enter the top of the fifth. The bunt is going to go into foul territory, and no one is ready for the play. Not Lee or Urgle. Bailey a bit further behind. Let's give you a quick look around the rest of the NCAA. Taking a look at the rest of the South Regional, West Alabama and St. Leo took tough defeats. West Alabama ultimately lost in 10 innings. It was 3-2 to two after 10 innings, so a very, very long second game of that regional. Auburn Montgomery took a victory. In fact, you definitely can call it an upset over St. Leo, who's hosting that region, not too far from the University of Tampa. St. Leo and Tampa are relatively close to each other. The throw to first. No, not on target. As well, Urgle made the catch. Sorry, not Urgle. Fagan made the catch. Her foot was off the bag. The throw drew her off, so the bunt was perfect. It puts two aboard now with no one out. But yeah, just going back to quickly, so we'll see Nova Southeastern and Auburn Montgomery facing off early tomorrow in the South Region number two. Western Alabama and St. Leo fighting for their season later that afternoon. And of course here at the University of Tampa, earlier today, as there's another bunt, the throw this time is on target, Fagan is able to make the play, but the sacrifice works out to both runners in scoring position. One away. So Eddie's sacrifice works, and that gives Gracie Green a chance. Now the question is, does Huntsville try another squeeze bunt? Certainly an idea. They did it with the bases loaded, and so far their bunts have been quite good. Even when there's been occasional foul balls, they've generally got it down, and more often than not, it's actually worked out. First pitch goes up high, and good turnaround by Lee to make sure it didn't get behind her. One of the Pitches earlier in the game bounced off her glove and went wild, allowing a run to, runner to move up. Here, you don't want that because, well, there's a runner pretty close to home. 1-0 and one out. Bailey checking the wrist. Fires as this one's into the gap. And Huntsville takes the lead. It's a double that scores two. A standing double from Gracie Green. And the Chargers will surge with the lead. And that is an important hit in the ball game. As Alabama Huntsville will finally open up the scoring again. This was a perfect hit. It got right in the gap, splitting Lachlan and Dill. He got to it before there was enough time for Gracie Green to get a triple, but damage was already done. 
That's going to bring up Thompson now. Thompson rips it down the line. This will score another run. It's a 4-1 lead for the Chargers. Have a chance for a double. In fact, she's going to go three. Safe. Thompson responds with a hit of her own. This time the line drive down the line stays fair, and while Dill was able to get to it, there wasn't enough time to get the throw in as there was a close place at third. Hayes, the lefty, will step up now. And there is someone going to the Choctaw's bullpen. That's an idea. I think that's good. He wants to try to get a good arm out there. And again, Bailey is most certainly going to be the pitcher tomorrow. So they are going to make this change quickly. Bailey responsible for the current runner and four runs that are currently the Chargers lead. Entering the game is going to be Jesse Cole, it looks like, or it could be Katie Bracken, but we'll be right back as the new pitcher will warm up. We'll be right back. Being a champion. One away here, and taking the circle is Avery Barnett. First pitch fouled away as Hayes now is a runner at third base. Bailey completes her outing today, although I imagine that Bailey will be back tomorrow no matter what happens. Wherever the Choctaws face, they'll certainly be rolling out the teammates for that game. And for now, Barnett is going to be looking to come in as a stopper to keep the door shut. To try to keep the Choctaws in the fight. Time running low in the game, too. You've only got nine more outs for Mississippi College. Here's the 1-1. Hayes takes for ball two. 16 and 4 record for Barnett. Also has a save. Oh, enters with a 4.43 record. 94 strikeouts, 27 walks. It's a pretty good ratio. However, opponents are batting 290 against her. Slightly higher number than Bailey's, but one of the better pitchers remaining for the Choctaw's bullpen. And this one's going to go outside for a 3 and 1 count for Hayes. Hayes drew a walk back in the first inning and they might just be wanting to get Hayes aboard to open up a double play opportunity. I'll certainly say that it's a dangerous spot. And the 3-1 is hit to the outfield. It drops, and it's a 5-1 lead for the Chargers. Hayes will convert with an RBI. And I will say, Thompson was running early, but it was the right idea, as it was dropping. But obviously, if Dill was able to close down and make the play, that's where a little red flag can come up and you can try to turn up for a double play. Adams with a runner on first. And that means for Bailey, it's now five earned on the day. Taken high for ball one. Very close call there again. Just couldn't drop in time to get in the zone. Adams singled in the third and flew out in the first. Right, 
2 0 now. One away. You got a runner aboard. Hayes, the leading base stealer for Huntsville, 21 and 27 on the season. And you certainly have that in the back of your mind if you're Barnett, as Hayes is going to go again. Lying down the line and foul. Would have been dangerous if it stayed fair. And the count is now 2 and 1. This has been a huge inning for the Chargers, just getting the offense going. This one's going to be blooped to center field, and Blotlin on top of it, two away. I'll say Blotlin hasn't had too many difficult plays in center field, but has been there for all of them. That's an important thing to remember. You always look at a fly ball, you always look at a little pop-up, and you always think, okay, that's an easy out. It always isn't. You always have to be ready as a fielder to make that play because the pressure's on you. If you make that error, that's incredibly costly. So again, heads up for Lawlin to make those simple plays stay quite simple. Here's Vaught taking strike one. About as good of a pitch as you'll see. Barnett challenging early in the count. Vaught singled in the first, flew out in the third. Barnett gets and gets the sign. Looks like she's getting a sign from the dugout, relaying it to her wrist. Taken for ball one. I was almost about to say it looked like that Vaught had a, a taint top tile jersey as well. That we saw from one of the Tuskegee players earlier. But no, it's just shorter sleeves. Fouled away. That brings the count to one and two with two outs here. A chance for the Choctaws to get out of the inning. It's been the longest inning of the day, and I think that's actually been the longest inning in terms of both games for both teams. Here's the one-two. Barnett getting set. Fouled away one more time. That one's over by the bullpen. Got Henderson on deck. Question will be whether Henderson gets a chance here. We'll have to wait to the bottom of the fifth. Barnett checks one more time. Taken low for ball two. Changeup wanted the swing and didn't get it. Barnett looking again, ready to go. Runner goes. There won't be a play at second. The throw is made the first. A good 6-3 to get out of the inning. The Chargers strained a runner, but did more than enough damage to take the lead. It's a 5-1 lead for Alabama Huntsville, and two up for the Choctaw is 8-9-1. Dill, Laughlin, and Samples will be back at the top of the fifth right after this. So a pretty active weekend here across the Sunshine State Conference in all of Division II sports. Tampa will be hosting lacrosse and hosting softball as we continue the South Regional 
5-1 lead for Alabama Huntsville. Another thing that's pretty active this weekend, if you're a singing fan, is Eurovision. I sometimes do a little singing interlude after a commercial break, but honestly, I need to save my voice. I've got a long weekend ahead of me, so I will refrain from singing any refrains. One and one as this pitch is going to land for strike one against, should be, Henderson. Anyway, here's the 1-1. One, one. Thompson checking the sign. Never mind, it is not. The stats broadcast sheet was very slow to update. It's Dill at the plate. Definitely love it when that is just a little behind. Anyway, 1-2 is Dill, the one-for-one one hitter. Looks to try to get the offense going for Mississippi. Mississippi College. You know, taking high. I to make sure I specify Mississippi College because, you know, there's always Ole Miss, Mississippi State. MC is different from the other Mississippi teams. Mainly because they're the only one in a Division II tournament. Two and two now as this one's fouled away by Dill. Thompson has really started to find her groove in the circle. Getting out of innings pretty quickly. And already has recorded three strikeouts. Just the three hits allowed earlier. And now she has a bit more run support from her team. This one's going to be bloop to right field. In fact, more than a bloop, it's going to go all the way to the wall. Dill around second. Dill a leadoff triple for Mississippi College. That is what they needed. The first hit and a few base uh, runners. Hadn't had it for the last two innings, and now they will when they need it the most. Laughlin up, the senior, 0 for 1 today. And they're actually going to be making a change from the circle. Now, I wonder, I wonder why you go from a lefty against a lefty to a different pitcher. Although... I have to just wait and see why. Maybe saving Thompson's arm? Anyway, Thompson will complete her day with 68 pitches, three strikeouts, and does pretty well. And I think the reason is because they are going to go with Katie Bracken, who was the conference pitcher of the year, 167 ERA. And normally I'll cut to the break, but actually we'll stay on here as we're kind of late to it and give her a chance to warm up. I'll use this time to take a look around the rest of the NCAA and a few of the other games that have been played. I already mentioned the South region. St. Leo and West Alabama are the two losers. They'll play later tomorrow. Nova and Auburn Montgomery play early tomorrow. We've got a live game over at one of the other regions. Actually, two of the games are already done. East Stroudsburg. And Westchester take victories. They'll be facing early tomorrow at 11 a.m. Bowie State and West Virginia Wesleyan will be facing off in that sort of the bracket in the losers round. Cuts down, upset Charleston. Six seed beating a three seed. Shippensburg currently losing to Davis and Elkins in the top of the fourth. Well, we're just about ready to go. And it'll be a tough task for Mississippi College facing off against Katie Brackett. Here we go. Dill at third. Laughlin at the plate. Taken for strike one. Question posed by the Mississippi College radio broadcaster here is that whether they would try a bunt. We saw a squeeze bunt work for the Chargers earlier and see if the chalk talk can benefit the same way. 0-1. Bracken misses up high. But indeed, Bracken, one of the better pitchers inside the entirety of D2 softball. I think it's a good idea to bring her in here, give her a chance to go maybe three innings and secure victory. And of course, you can still have her with a good enough stamina to go again tomorrow against the Tampa Spartans if she holds on to it. But if not, she'd also be ready to go against Tuskegee as well. Certainly. 
it's tough to really ask a pitcher to go over 200 pitches within a day or two. I know, I believe it was Rollins who did that last season, having one of their pitchers go the distance and then some over the weekend series. 1-2 now for Laughlin. Swung on and missed. Bracken gets an important strikeout here. One away. That'll bring up Samples, who's 0 for 2 today. Samples flew out both the previous times. Another flyout would bring that run home and cut the deficit to 3. First pitch taking a pie for ball. No, strike one just on the outside corner. Very close call there. The Mississippi College fans might be a little disappointed. That was one that normally you'd maybe see in Samples' favor, but I hey, can't argue against City Hall. The 1 Samples checks up. It's 1-1. One and one. Bracken checks the wrist quickly. Ready to go. Fouled away, and the count goes one and two. That one was a little slow to roll off the netting. And you saw Gracie Green not able to get the foul ball as it bounces past her. One two here for Sample. You notice Sample's foot positioning. Very high up in front of the plate. I think she just wants to put something on the ground. Sample's going to bloop this one over to left field, and it'll be dropped. Not not dropped, but it'll drop. And keep her alive, one and two. And obviously, Gill just holding at third base. You know, if there's a deep foul ball, you can also score and tag up off that. That sliding catch was made. She could also tag up and run and try to make it home. We we'll go one more, one two, one more time. The lefty samples at the plate. And did she go? Yes, she did. The check over with Cintrons, and he says yes. Two away here in the top of the fifth, and this makes the task a little harder. You can't bring a sacrifice home. You have to get a hit or benefit off an error. Fagan at the plate. Two flyouts. Looting one, which was a pop fly over to first base. See if Bracken can get out of this jam after the leadoff triple. It would be huge for the Chargers. This one's going to be sent to the outfield. Tracking it, Thompson, and she makes the catch. It was a leadoff triple, but Bracken comes on and gets three quick outs in relief. That'll be disappointing for the Choctaw. They have six outs remaining. And the bottom of the fifth coming up for Huntsville. They have the four, five, and six hitters due up. You're watching regional softball in the Sunshine State Conference Digital Network. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I am an NCAA student athlete. And I pledge to be a champion of unity on my team, on my campus, and in my community. I pledge to embrace differences and strive for inclusion and collaboration. I pledge to stand against racism, hate, and discrimination. I pledge to strive for love, care, and forgiveness. I pledge to stand against silence, deceit, and obscurity. I pledge to strive for dialogue, truth, and understanding. I pledge to stand against fear and doubt. I pledge to strive for trust and belief in one another. I pledge to stand against complacency and stagnancy. I pledge to strive for change and growth. I commit to supporting my fellow student athletes in all circumstances that impact them. I commit to both choosing unity personally, and encouraging it for all. I pledge these things because we are stronger together. United, United as, as one. one. We're ready to go in the bottom of the fifth. Mississippi College had a runner at third but couldn't score. The Chargers made a change in the circle and Bracken got out of the jam. 
They changed, and so did Mississippi College. Barnett came on and got the final two outs in the bottom of the fourth. And now we'll start here in the bottom of the fifth. Henderson leads off for the Chargers. Henderson had a single back in the first inning and takes for ball one. Henderson went down looking back in the third inning. This one's taken, this time for strike one. Both teams will go again tomorrow. This simply determines who goes at 11 a.m. or 12 a.m. and who goes at 3 p.m. Winner faces Tampa, loser faces Tuskegee. And ooh, the off speed, beautiful for what I honestly feel probably should have been strike two, but just misses a little bit low it looked like. Two and one now for Henderson. Looked to be well placed. Always tough to tell. This one ripped and caught on the diving grab by Moore. Moore's done a good job at third base as the Choctaw third base player and makes another good grab here to get the first out of the inning, denying what would have been the 10th hit for the Chargers. Entering the game is Carton Hartron. Ball went up high. And by the way, I mentioned there could be implement weather earlier in the day during Tampa's game. I'm not sure if I mentioned it here. We're getting word that there also could be weather not too far away. If there is a form of lightning passing by, that does cause the game to be delayed for some time, as this one's grounded to second for out number two. So we'll let you know if we have to pause. Taking a look at the... Uh, Real Weather app. I definitely recommend getting AccuWeather to give up to date weather information. Gives you the real feel, gives you everything you need. And the radar should be clear. It's got, I think, a couple passing showers, but if anything does happen, it wouldn't be long term and wouldn't be anything too severe. Also, what wasn't severe was the offense from the Chargers this time around. They go down in order. Barnett, a quick inning. That'll begin the top of the sixth as we've played five with an Alabama-Huntsville 5-1 lead. And we're back, and we're going to be ready to go here in the top of the sixth inning. Our sporting or one of our directors, Tom Colby, said he may expect the lightning siren to go off soon. So the jinx is on him. It is not on me if that happens. Lee leads off. She'll be followed by Urgle and Moore for the Choctaw as we get back underway. Bracken back in the circle, ready to go. Six more outs for Mississippi College. Back 
Gets a pitch she likes. Taken low for ball one. One and zero for Lee. Lee had a double back in the first inning and scored the only run of the ball game for the Choctaw. Driven deep left field, but it's going to go off the fence, so it won't hit one of the cars in the parking lot. That's actually happened, I think, once or twice this season. I know last season one of the workers would play a car alarm sound as a prank when there was a foul ball in that general direction. Count is one and one now for Lee. Bracken checks the wrist. And up high, first strike, two. Eddie, good job to try to frame that in the zone. The high pitches have been balls for most of the game. And now it's a one-two count for the batter, who is one and two today. Driven into the gap in right. But a catch on the run is made by Adams, one away. That'll bring up Urgle now. Lee had a chance to try to replicate Dill's leadoff triple, but a good running catch by Adams prevents that. Urgle is one for two and stepping back up. Taking a look at Urgle's stats overall, hitting 376, 726 slugging for 56 on base percentage. Tied for the team lead in strikeouts, 21, but also tied for second in, in team walks with 19. Brooke Fagan leads in walks with 37 on the season. That's a pretty impressive number. Here's the 1-0. Ball went taken up high. I'm trying to look and see... For Bracken, is there a little hop in her step? That looked like it. Wouldn't be too different from former Major League pitcher Carter Capps, who would include a little kick in his motion. As this pitch misses inside for Urgle, it's 2-0. Five, six, and seven do up. They are all 0 for 2 today for Mississippi College. And, well, the 3 is going to miss, and that is ball 4 for Ergel. And it looks like there will be a pinch runner coming aboard. I don't think there's a reason not to make a pinch run in this situation. We want to have someone a little more prolific at stealing bases, especially since you can always make the change back to Ergel later on. One aboard and one away with Moore stepping up. Moore is 0 for 2. And we've got the word coming in for Mississippi College is Emily Rigney. A 424 hitter with three stolen bases will be the pinch runner. And I was ready to make the look and see a batter from the left side come on, but the reason is, is that that's actually the Huntsville dugout. The number five on first, and here's Moore. Taken for ball one. Bracken, 147 strikeouts, but one note, 16 wild pitches, 14 hit batters, and 71 walks. So certainly, despite her incredible season and 18 and one record, control can be an issue. Being disciplined can keep you ahead in the count and give you a chance. There's a conference in the circle quickly. Let's see how they strategize trying to get out of the inning.
Here's the 1-0 from Bracken. This one popped up and fouled back 1-1. One and one. Now ready to go. The 1-1 one, one sent foul. Chasing it was Adams and Cartron, but weren't able to get it. I know Hayes was also going to. Count goes 1-2. and two. Moore would certainly like to get the first hit pass bracket here as she's gone through one and a third innings of work. Takes a look and gets a sign she likes. Foul backwards. It was almost slapped forward and would have probably advanced a runner. I'm not sure if Rigney was running or just going on the contact. But interesting to see whether she's going to go and try to get to scoring position. I certainly feel it would be an interesting and likely good idea. All right, to put a runner in a chance to score. You only have five outs remaining. Lit up the middle, it's a base hit. And they are just going to be cautious. There probably wouldn't have been enough time for Rigney to get to third. There are two aboard with the single. And LaFosse steps back up with one out and two aboard. Bracken ready to go. This one's lined and caught at third, and they will get a clutch double play. Rigney took the lead thinking that that one was getting down for a hit, but a diving catch by Gracie Green will turn the hopes around for Mississippi College. That is a very unlucky break, and the Chargers hold on to the 5-1 lead as we enter the bottom of the sixth. They have one last chance to pad the lead before we enter last chance saloon. CAA and its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org slash opportunity. Ready to go. 5 1 lead for Alabama Huntsville. One and zero here to Eddie Barnett. Continuing, has got one through uh, one and two thirds. Had a quick one two three inning last time, and will that start with an out as well? Yes, Fagan drifts and makes the catch. One away to bring up Gracie Green. She's two for two and has made some good defensive plays, including the double play to end the previous inning. A double and a single. Just needs a triple and a home run to complete the cycle. And yes, that is probably impossible in this stage of the game. Did bring home two RBIs with one of her doubles earlier. Taken low for ball one. Green.
Green had a pretty solid regular season. Obviously a little better on the defensive front than offensive front, but really coming alive today with her bat. And it's proven to be very useful for Huntsville. But this play is quickly made by Fagan, two away. And Barnett has quickly gotten two outs. And by the way, Urgle is back over at first. Barnett would be looking to get another batter out in a row. Apparently, it's been seven outs in a row for her, including the previous inning. As a chance to wrap up the day with yet another. Thompson had a triple that brought home a run on her last at bat and takes strike one. I wonder if Barnett gets a potential call up for tomorrow's game as well. I mean, obviously... You'd probably expect it as one of the team's best pitchers. But I assume that Bailey would get the start again. Taking up high for ball one. Seven, eight, nine are due up for Mississippi College in the bottom of the order. Although they are a little bit better in terms of getting on base as a combined two and six. Those two hits came from one batter. And this next pitch could take us to that last chance saloon. A chance for the Choctaw to work a comeback and avoid a trip to the elimination bracket. It's going at the loser's bracket, but it's actually the, the real name is the elimination bracket. The one, two. Taking up high for ball one, or two. The sun shining again. The inclement weather, I think, just passing by. It's not hit the campus. And we've been lucky that there hadn't been a siren. That would be bad news in this stage of the game. Swung on and missed. Barnett gets her first strikeout and completes a great relief appearance. Surrendering just one hit. And getting eight batters out in a row. Question will be whether she gets a chance in the bottom of the seventh. That depends on how the top goes. 5-1 lead for the Chargers. Three more outs remaining. I pledge. I pledge. I pledge. I, pledge. I am an NCAA student athlete. And I pledge to be a champion of unity. On my team, on my campus, and in my community. I pledge to embrace differences and strive for inclusion and collaboration. I pledge to stand against racism, hate, and discrimination. I pledge to strive for love, care, and forgiveness. I pledge to stand against silence, deceit, and obscurity. I pledge to strive for dialogue, truth, and understanding. I pledge to stand against fear and doubt. I pledge to strive for trust and belief in one another. I pledge to stand against complacency and stagnancy. I pledge to strive for change and growth. I commit to supporting my fellow student athletes in all circumstances that impact them. I commit to both choosing unity personally and encouraging it for all. I pledge these things because we are stronger together. United, United as, as one. Chargers Choctaw entering the top of the seventh. Last chance saloon. Bracken in the circle. Two innings, two strikeouts, one hit and one walk. Done a good job in relief so far. Got out of a jam previously. Needs three more outs to send Alabama Huntsville to the regional semifinal against the Tampa Spartans. The winner of that game gets a bye until the next day for the Saturday finales. But for now, both teams will, of course, plan Friday. The question will be who plays early, who plays late, and will either team have to play twice? We could very easily see Mississippi College lose, beat Tuskegee, and if Alabama Huntsville loses to the Spartans, a rematch uh, between these two rivals. Would certainly be exciting. You'd love to see a conference rivalry in the regional tournament. We had, I think, a great story last year between, I believe it was Eckerd and Rollins here at the University of Tampa. They had a great showdown with seasons on the line. The 1-1 one -one ripped down the line and very far foul. Stays fair in the right spot. That could be extra bases. And, well, maybe even an, another triple. The batter who did get that triple, Dill, is on deck. Yeah, 
One, two for Eden. Knows how to slug it. But obviously, home runs a little bit harder in this ballpark. There's only been a, I can count them out. There have been on my hand the last couple seasons. Tried to frame it, but didn't get it. And that was the right call. It did miss. Eddie tried to pull it back into the zone. 2-2. Two -two. Taken low as it rolls in the dirt, and the count will go full. It's a somewhat comfortable lead at the moment for Mississippi College, although I actually do believe with the amount of runs that have been scored, Kraken, Bracken is in a save opportunity. And that hits her. It just drifts inside, and a runner is aboard to start the inning. If another pitching change is made, which it doesn't look like there will be, they're just going to quickly give another little conference and talk to Bracken quickly. We'll see what happens. Hannah Tozen enters the game. Nine for nine in terms of stolen bases. They want a fast runner here when this is the only inning that matters. Mississippi College needs to score four to stay in the game. Dill had a triple last time and is two for two. Single and a triple. Obviously, it'd be really hard to get two at bats in this time frame, but a double and a home run would give her a cycle. And I only mention that here because the triple is usually the hardest hit to get in terms of a cycle. Have enough power, the home run can come easy. The single just needs a little bloop, and double gets into the gap. You really need a lot of speed or a really, really big hit into the gap to get a triple. Even on a smaller softball field, it's not something you see every day. You have seen it today. First pitch here for Bracken against, against Dill. Taken for strike one. Throw back at first. Safe. Good move there from Eddie to try to look at the runner. Toes him back in time. Now, while you do want to be aggressive in the base paths, you do also want to be careful when stealing. And out here would be catastrophic for Mississippi College. The 0-1. Taken for strike two. Bracken finding two strikes here. With runners aboard, a snap that hasn't been in their favor. They're two for ten. Don't want to go two for eleven here. Dill takes up high. Ball one. The one two for Dill. Here comes the one two to Dill. Up Dill two and two. Finds herself in a little bit of a pickle in this at bat. Two and two in the count. You also have to be careful when you do go for a base hit because a ground ball could induct a double play, which is the absolute worst case scenario here with just three outs remaining. Taken outside for ball three. Will the runner go here? That's the question. Kaylee Comer taking some practice swings. Looks like she's going to be bringing, brought into the game as a pinch hitter. Gets on base for the 400 percentage. Maybe they're looking for someone who's got good discipline to try to work themselves on base. And Dill swings and misses. It's a big strikeout for Bracken, her third of the game. One away here in the top of the seventh. And Comer will enter the game as a pinch hitter. One out here in the seventh. And it's one away.
So Comer in the game. First pitch from Bracken. Swing and miss. Bracken showcasing the stuff that gave her a plus nine K through nine rate. I believe that's probably gonna be a similar rate for K through seven, I believe. Maybe a little bit higher, I'm not fully sure. Yo one, taken inside for ball one. Taking a look there for Bracken, and now she is ready to go with a 1-1. Swung on and missed, the high fastball fooling her. On deck is Samples. The question will be whether she gets pinch hit too. I don't think she is. Checks the wrist one more time. Here's the one, two. Misses in the dirt. And Eddie ready to go. Tawson stays back. It's two and two. Got both Chargers and Choctaw fans excited as we're in the real, real big moments of this game. Misses inside for three and two. Very close, but a good take as it did just miss an inside corner. Those are also really tough calls for an ump. And you got to remember that Anthony Amato, he's in that difficult spot when it comes to saying whether a ball or strike because he knows just how impactful these can be. The full count. Tazen stays put as this one's fouled away. As Comer keeps alive. The season won't end tonight for either team, but it certainly is better if you're on, on top. You do have a tougher opponent in Tampa than Tuskegee. But you also do have that free loss if you win tonight and a chance to win whoever takes the victory later tomorrow in the elimination bracket. And now here's the one, three, two. And did it hit her? No, it hit off the bat. It's going to be a foul ball. Looks like Huntsville just quickly talking over with the umpire. Not sure if there's going to be a defensive change or not. You're thinking. I can't see the bullpen right now for the Chargers, but they could be looking there. I should note that Alabama Huntsville, in terms of pitchers who've been active, have had a total of eight. That's more than any other team here for the tournament. But anyway, full count, payoff pitch coming. From Bracken. Foul back. That, of course, will also bring the question, who will start tomorrow for the Chargers, depending on who they face? Will Bracken get the call, or maybe they even bring on Megan Schertz, who has a 318 ERA and 97 innings, the second most for Huntsville. That's who I would have expected to start today, but actually went with a little curveball. Here's the 3-2. Popped up. It's playable for Hayes. Makes the catch. Two away. Comer avoids a strikeout, but can't avoid a second out of the inning. Here comes Samples. The lefty against the righty. Down to their last out. They've got one runner on, and they still trail by four. Sample struck out back in the fifth. I believe she was the first opponent that Kraken faced. Taken inside for ball one. Two flyouts earlier today as well. She just needs to put the ball in play and let some magic happen. And Bracken wants to either get that strikeout or have the defense cover her up. Sample takes outside and gets ahead 2-0. That's a good start to her at bat. It's the top of the order, so if the offense does start to come alive for Mississippi College, 
It's the bats that you want to be coming up here. Samples takes up high. It's 3-0. and Fagan on deck. And in this count right here, which is should be 3-0, and not 2-0, and as the scoreboard says. Will we see Fagan, or will this one go for strike one? And ball four. A walk with two away to put a second runner aboard. Tying run on deck. Fagan ready to go. Lee right behind her. Fagan's also 0 for 3 today, but unlike Samples, hadn't struck out. She popped up and flew out a few times. It will be another huge at bat and see if Bracken can keep finding the zone. Checks her wrist, getting the sign. Taken up high. Strike one. I don't think Fagan really liked it. And that has been a very close pitch for both teams. It feels like it's actually gone against Choctaw hitters a little more than it's gone against the Chargers hitters. You can't argue with City Hall, but you can't argue that it was very close. This one is going to miss. Runner. Back safe. Oof, that was a little scary for Tawson. She took a little lead, and Eddie was not caught off guard by it. In fact, threw it back to Hayes to make sure that Tawson wasn't going to get caught back there for the final out. That would be the way you don't want to lose the game. Here's the 1-1 from Bracken. Swung on and missed. One and two down to their final strike. Will we have a conference championship matchup tomorrow at noon? Or can Missouri Mississippi College, why did I say Missouri, stay alive here? It's one and two. Bracken ready. Taken low, and that is two and two. I believe Kraken would get the save as she came on with a runner aboard and a four-run lead. That is generally what a save situation would be. The one-two, one more time, or two-two now. Tozen, samples on base. They're ready to run. Ball three, and they will be running on anything. They are going to be, in fact, just running in general. A walk loads the bases, and it brings up the tying run in Lee. A huge payoff pitch coming up here. Top of the seventh, two outs, full count. Bracken ready to go. Did she go? No, but it's called strike three in the inning, and the game is over. Bracken gets out of a jam and locates the zone for her fourth strikeout. And the Alabama Huntsville Chargers take the opening round victory here in the regional. They will move on to the semifinal against the Tampa Spartans. Mississippi College, we will see you tomorrow at 3 p.m. They'll face off against the Tuskegee Golden Tigers and have a chance to fight their way back into the final as they take on the loser of Game 1 tomorrow in Game 3. Game 1 tomorrow, though, Spartans and Chargers. You don't want to miss it. It'll be at noon tomorrow, and it'll be back here on Sunshine State Conference Digital Network at the Namoli Family Stadium. The win is going to go to Thompson, I believe. Actually, no, I don't think it'll be. Actually, will it be Thompson? Yes, Thompson does get the win. Thompson was able to go four innings. Gave up the leadoff triple and then was replaced. And I think with that triple, that actually puts... A save situation here for Bracken. We'll have to wait and see if that's counted, but what we do know is the win goes to Thompson. Yes, the save goes to Bracken. The loss will go to Bailey. A tough outing for her, just a blow-up inning that ultimately led to defeat. But we'll be back with more softball tomorrow. That concludes day one of South Regional Softball here in the South Region. And one more time, Spartans, Chargers, Golden Tigers, Choctaw. Two exciting matchups and a third one right after. 
It'll be a great Friday, but thank you for joining us today on Thursday. I'm Taylor Storr, signing off. We'll see you next time.